Welcome to the new digs. It's not even close to being done. I gotta do some plastering. We gotta do some painting, but it's quiet. Editor customization. Recently, I've gotten some questions about how I've gotten the editor to look how it does. I am using Passive Stars minimal theme as a base, but basically it's moving some columns over, adjusting some colors, tightening some things up within the, the text, and the workflow is a lot better for myself. So here we've got our default editor settings. If you've ever installed the Gato engine and opened it up for the first time, this is what you're used to. You've got your scene and your import tabs and file system tabs here on the left side, your main viewport right in the middle, and your inspector node history on the right side. As you start to use the engine more, you may find that I might want things in a different spot, and you can do that. So the first thing that we can do is actually move where these tabs are. You're gonna see these three little dots up here in each of these tab systems. And if you click on that, you're gonna see the docking options. Now what you can do is swap the dock position of that tab, and you've got two positions, two columns, on the left and the right side, or you can make it floating. I also wanna shout out Zenva for sponsoring this video. Zenva Academy offers easy to follow beginner and intermediate courses for game development with Gato 4, including a fantastic free introductory course that you can check out right now that covers all the basics to help you get started. As a paid Zenva member, you get professional video tutorials, written lessons, and interactive quizzes. You'll work on real projects, building games in different genres like open world, RPGs, and first-person shooters. And if you have interests beyond the Gato engine, they have courses on Python, Unity, Unreal, and other tools. A subscription includes a seven-day free trial, and the first 50 subscribers can use my link in the description to get an extra 20% off the first year. Back to our dock position setups, we can move each of these tabs to the left or the right side. Right now we've got the innermost left and the top right innermost on the right side. If we wanted to move our scene tab to the right side, for example, all we'd have to do is select the scene tab, select our three dot button menu right here and click in a different spot. Let's move it below our inspector. And there it is. Now, if you have multiple tabs in a, a setup, for example, you've got scene and import in the same spot, you gotta do it for each one. Now, instead of using the menu button, you can also just click and drag your tab to a different spot. These positions are saved when you close out of the editor, and when you open back up, everything's gonna be back right where you put it. Now, in my setup, I've moved everything sort of to the right side. I've got my scene and import, same setup right on the top of my file system in the first column on the right and my inspector tab here on the right side. I like to have my scene and file system obviously close together as it's already set up, but it's really nice to have whatever scene or node you're working on affect your inspector tab and not have to go fully across the screen every single time. That gets a little old. Now a second ago I mentioned floating tabs and you can take each of these tabs in your editor and float these puppies and move them anywhere you want on your screen. You can put them on an entirely different screen if you want that kind of a setup. For the smaller ones, I kind of keep them in the editor. I think it works a little bit better that way. Now, if you float one of these tabs and you close it, it's gonna pop back right where you got it from. But the cool thing that you can do in the most recent Gato versions, I'm thinking 4.1 and above, it might be earlier, don't quote me on that. You can take other parts of the editor and float them. The most important, in my opinion, being the scripting tab. Raise your hand if you like to have your script on a completely different screen. And I've got, I've got three, you can't see them, but I've got one, two, and then a really a tall one right here, which I'm still getting used to. I don't know if I like it. Now, if you're working on smaller stuff, I think the, the scripting tab within the editor, it works fine, but sometimes you wanna see your, your 3D or 2D tab while you're working on your script. So let's open up our, our very, ambitious and complex 3D scene here, and we open up our script, you can't see anything, right? But if you click on this icon right up here, our script is gonna float. And you can take this, you can put it even down further and layer your windows if you want, or like I like to do, ship it over to another screen, and you've got all that real estate on the right side or the left side with your script, especially if you got a longer one, that's pretty nice. And you can still see what you're working on in the editor. You can also do the same thing if you have a, I don't have a shader, I should, let's make one. If you have a, a shader that you're working on, you can do the same thing 
and make that editor float. You'll have that same icon right there at the bottom of your screen. You click that and there you go. Your shader is floating. And for shaders, it's really useful because any edits you make in that editor is gonna be seen live within the viewport. So pretty cool. Color. So the default color is, is not bad. It's very gato, right? Um, but we can actually change that. We can change two settings and change most of the, the editor look pretty easily. So what we can do is go to our editor menu option, go to our editor settings, and then we're gonna go to interface and theme. And first off, you've got some, some presets that you can go from and, and change and adjust. If you wanna pick a, uh, a black OLED, it's gonna take a second to load and then it's gonna pop in your new color. So our two options that we're looking at are the base color and the accent color. And as you can guess, the base color is affecting most of the editor. I kind of like working with dark. I don't know if you like to work in a, a lighter environment, let me know in the comments. It's not, it's not my taste, but let's say we go for a nice dark, maybe even make it a little bit of a dark blue, go with that. And it's gonna update right there. And then we can also adjust the accent colors. Our accent colors are gonna be seen in our tabs, our highlighted links, and a couple of other places and that's how I got the yellow within my theme. Let's do a, uh, let's make this really 80s. Let's go for a nice uh, vaporware orange. There we go. Now beyond colors, you also have some other things you can change. You can adjust your border size and make them larger, or in my opinion, as small as you can get them. You can change your icon saturation. You can adjust your corner radius of all your, your boxes. And that's all within this one settings tab. A lot of things you can change and make huge difference to how your editor looks. Now there are more advanced editor changes that you can make if you go into some other settings. For example, if you like to adjust the way your script looks, you can go into the text editor and adjust almost every single color, text color, string color. You wanna change the color of your functions, you can do that. That's all right here in this tab. You can also change the look and colors of your viewport. If you go down to the editors tab and let's say the, the 3D settings, Right now we've got a, a nice green outline for anything we select. We have our primary and secondary grid colors. You can totally change those. So let's make this a uh, nice pink to match our, our theme. Sometimes you might have to restart the editor for the changes to take effect. So all you gotta do is hit the save and restart and it's gonna update. We've updated our editor, we've saved our settings and now we've got our nice pink outline for anything we select within the 3D viewport. Same adjustments can be made within the 2D viewport. You can change the guide colors, the grid colors. And if you get really deep into it, you can also adjust your grid map, your 3D gizmos, animation, shader editor, everything. Now, one aspect of the viewport that you cannot change in that space, you have to go somewhere else. And that's the main background color of your scene. So in our 2D scene, you see our, our normal gray color. And if we turned off our environment within our 3D scene, going to see that same gray color. So where do you go to change that? Well, go to project, project settings. You kind of go to rendering environment and default clear color. You can change that to anything you like. I kind of like a little bit of a, a darker look. And there we go. Let's make this a little bit more, more 80s, right? Let's adjust this. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at that. That is hideous. Hope you learned a thing or two about how to customize the Gato Engine editor. If you have a really cool theme that you're using, I'd love to hear about it. You can send it to me on, I'll say Twitter. I don't call it X. Or put it in the comments and uh, share it. Share it with people because you can share these themes. It's pretty cool. Catch me in the next one. And as always, keep creating.